All right, hey friends, welcome back to another week of chill kernel hacking for fun. This is week 34. And this week we are continuing with lab four from the MIT course on preemptive multitasking. And I'm just gonna start right back where we left off, um, which is with uh, exercise two. And also I will get the music going again right on so yeah last time we were learning how the secondary application processors on the system boot up um, we were looking into how the main processor the, the bsp the boot the bootstrap processor um, does these specific sequences um, to basically send these IPIs interrupts, IPI interrupts um, for init and startup to the APs using their IDs and whatnot. Um, and that's the main part of boot APs. That's what the main processor does to boot up these APs one by one. They execute their boot sequences and somehow do something to register this started thing. That's actually still a mystery to me. Um, and I think that's what we'll get to in these other parts here. So, but just to keep reading MP main. Um, set up code. Okay, so right, that's a little bit later. First, let's look at the assembly code in MP entry dot s this is the assembly code that the APs are going to run after receiving the startup IPI um, with which also specifies some address that they should start executing at um, it's very similar to the normal bootloader that the main CPU executes to get going it starts the the CPU start in real mode, um, and yeah, they they I think it said it's very similar except that you don't need to do the A twenty line and and stuff like that. I think it says that up here. Um, you don't need to do the A twenty line, and it something about the linker, <laughs> um, right? Uh, so let's just take a quick read through, disable interrupts, clear out all the segment registers, load a global descriptor table. So what is that? The basic global descriptor table right here with the null segment and a code segment and a data segment that just starts at zero and goes, goes all the way to the top of the address space. I kind of forget what these flags are, but I don't think they really matter that much. We have this kind of pseudo descriptor for actually loading into the, the GDT register. I think that's what we use here, the GDT descriptor. So we load the GDT, um, which gets us going into protected mode, I believe. And that, or we load the GTT and then change the control register zero to enable protected mode, very standard stuff. Um, we do, and then we do a long jump into the code segment, I guess, right here. Um, to I think that is part of the dance to get into protected mode. From there, we load the data data segment selector into a ton of these registers um, and zero into FS and GS. And then the next goal is to turn on paging, which we just do with our same entry page dir that the main processor uses. It's a, it's a super hyper minimal um, page directory um, that it pretty much just maps like this current base region and this like very low zero region um, that and, and kind of aliases them to point at the low for um, megabytes of memory. 
Um, so that's all pretty standard stuff. I talked about this a long time ago in, in another stream when I was explaining the boot up process and we were going through this. You can watch that if you want to learn more about that. Um, what next? Then we manipulate CR. Or so we load that into CR3. Um, then we turn on paging by enabling a bunch of bits in CR0. And then we then this is a bit more of the interesting part. Well, I mean, it's it's very standard. Also, we then call into the C code. Um, but to do that, we use a particular stack that is actually set in global memory, which is extremely interesting. I think that's part of the that's part of this thing. This is truly just a global variable that is written to on the BSP side and we read from it on the AP side. Um, and I'm just kind of wondering why there aren't concurrency issues with that, but it's just like, we strictly write it and then we never, uh, I guess we, then we block while this guy reads it, like once basically. Um, and then this thing only continues to write it again after this, this side has moved on. And so somehow we have like a certain kind of synchronization mechanism through this very basic spin lock thing. It seems, although I don't really get how this works, but whatever. Um, so we have a particular kernel stack for this AP. Nuke the frame pointer, call into the C code. Exercise for the reader, why the indirect call? That is actually kind of interesting. I don't believe we do that in the normal entry dot s. All we do is do a regular call. Um, so I'm not actually totally sure. I wonder if Is this? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I simply don't know. And I actually really want to know. Um, so I'm going to take the opportunity to ask uh, chat GPT. Um, and <clears throat> Why might an AP in x86 multiprocessor boot up need to do an indirect call into C code after uh, entering protected mode and enabling paging? Okay, I don't really get, I don't think it's a, I don't know, I don't really think any of this is a real address translation consistency. Maybe it's like, that's the closest answer I could think of. Something really to do with flushing caches or something like that. But to be honest, I don't know. Yeah, I think I, and I don't really know how to find the answer to that. I could do some Googling or maybe I could quickly in real time, JAWS MIT OS. What do I Google? I'm gonna Google A6 application processor indirect call. Um, I don't think I'm really going to find the answer. Okay, I'm going to give up on that. Anyway, that's the basic pr principle or basic 
idea of how the application processor starts booting up, then it jumps into its main function. Um, okay. And, or is it this, uh, the high EIP thing? Maybe it's, ah, I, th I think that might be it actually. Um, it's the, it's actually the same reason we need to do the indirect call here. We are executing from a very low EIP, basically. And here they actually do it before setting up the stack and stuff. I'm not sure if um, they're doing it after for some reason, but I believe that's part of the answer. Um, needing to do the transition from the low EIP memory to executing from high memory. I believe that's actually the reason. Um, pretty, yeah, in the weeds. And so now, now at this point, we switch to the kernel page dir, which implements the full memory layout. And this has already been set up completely by the, the BSP and it's just all shared memory, I guess. Um, so we just kind of use that. Um, and CPU num, that's interesting. Lay pick, I, so I don't understand how this just works or it, this returns the current, oh, it, it just based off of whoever currently, like which, uh, which processors MMIO registers are currently set here in this global variable. I think that's, that's just how it works. Um, so at some point, somebody must be setting this LAPIC thing. I would be curious to see where that happens. Ah, LAPIC init. That cannot be the only place, can it? Because that only happens once on the BSP. Or maybe not, or maybe that actually happens Oh, I mean, no, it happens here too, but this is before. That happens after this thing is run, so I don't know how this thing could be correct because it seems to depend on a previous state of the LAPIC variable, which is not set yet, so. Hmm. But then it, so this thing seems to re-execute on every process. Oh, but it, but it uh, only runs once, interesting. So I have one piece of confusion where I thought the, I thought there were like multiple LAPIX, one for each um, processor. I think that's what it mentioned in the, um, hmm. This is like kind of each local APIC, right? Oh, the local, when a local, okay. I don't know. I could have sworn it was like one lay pick per CPU, but whatever. Okay. So this just like apparently is executed multiple times, even though, or wait, or wait, oh, wait a sec. Um, I, I was a little bit misreading that. Lapic adder is different from this thing. Um, that is only initialized once by the BSP. I think there's only a single Lapic adder. I'm, I'm honestly very confused by this. Um,
There's like one local epic, but there's this other one. Now, I, I think this is important to really understand. Epic. In an SMP, each CPU has an accompanying, accompanying lay pick. But if this, does this? So this thing doesn't seem to change very much. It's set exactly once in MP init, which I think only runs once. And then this map is just simply based off of that. And it's just a singular region. But also it's but also it's true that um, oh if this is zero we don't do anything but if it's not zero we, we we do execute this multiple times I think but someone we set it to zero here I see that's that's only if we failed to read the BIOS data. Otherwise, we have some LAPIC region. Interesting. Anyway, I, I still kind of don't get how this thing even works then, the CPU num thing, because it seems based on this this thing. So it does, and this ID thing is a constant. So how does this thing return anything different? Mm. It would seem to me that on, like, say we're executing the first AP and bringing it up, we're trying to print out the CPU starting. I'm gonna come in here and see that it's been set already. Um, actually, yeah, who runs LAPIC init? Yeah, the main processor runs this already. So it has already run this and set this thing. And so that's going to be valid and we're just going to use, but it, I feel like it's, it's going to print out the late pick of the previous CPU, not the one that we're currently booting up. And I don't even know what's going to happen over here. When we, when we rerun it, we're going to like rerun all this stuff. And it doesn't seem like we're using different We're not using a different LAPIC adder. So I kind of don't, I'm like, uh, it seems like we're just remapping different pieces of virtual memory that all point back to the same singular LAPIC adder, which I don't know if that sounds right to me, but I, I, I clearly a lot of things I don't understand here. But basically now we're booting up the C code of the AP um, <clears throat> and printing out some stuff. Just gonna do. Why does this print out the current AP um, and, and not the previous one? Okay. Um, then we just apparently we have a bunch of per CPU init we need to do. And we do that. And then here we go. We do our atomic like swap thing. Somehow we can get a, this CPU, which just like goes to the CPU's array and indexes into it. Somehow use the same, using the same um, CPU num thing, which somehow works. Um, Yeah, somehow works. So can any CPU just call this CPU? So like the only way this makes sense to me is if for some reason each CPU can actually 
access the same like memory addresses, but different things happen. Like CPU one can access this ID register at this address and read out its value. The second CPU can also do the same thing, basically read the exact same address in physical memory, but get a different result back somehow, um, which doesn't really totally make sense to me. Cause that would mean, I think like the, the memory buses need to be configured in a certain way. Mm. Yeah, I don't get that at all. Like my assumption was that, um, each lay pick is going to have some some a different region of the physical address space for its own registers and each cpu needs to know to read the corresponding region <clears throat> but i don't think that's really what's happening here unless i'm still misreading the code it really seems it, i mean it does kind of seem like this late lay pick thing gets reassigned um multiple times as this function executes multiple times but but the, the input is not changed this like this input thing is not changing um so i'm not really understanding how uh these things map to different physical memory it all seems to map to the same physical memory so anyway but anyway we can somehow get the status bit in um the cpu info and do like an atomic write or something like that um and say that we have started um so this, this is kind of like our basic spin lock i guess um and now that we finished call schedule to start running processes on the cpu making sure that only one cpu can enter the scheduler at a time Okay, that's, I'm not quite there yet. So, okay, now I kind of have read through a lot of these basics. I understand the control, transferring the bootstrap of APs. Modify the implementation of page init in Kern PMAPC to avoid adding the page MP entry P header to the free list so that we can safely copy and run AP bootstrap code at that physical address. Um, Hey, or what was it? P mat or page in it. Um, okay. So basically we are just kind of like deny, making like a deny list of um, specific parts of the physical address space that we do not want to be eligible for allocation. It's been a while since I've worked on this code, but <clears throat> yeah. The basic idea is we have just all these frame indexes, indices, boot alloc start frame. And I guess it, Um, I hope it is M. So what I just want to see is, is refresh myself on what these addresses are and then see um, where our like special, um, what's it called again? It's uh, MP entry P adder. Where does that, so this is quite low in memory. This is extremely low in memory. It's like hex 7,000. So I don't think we are excluding that so far. We're excluding zero because of like, I don't know, real mode IVT stuff or whatever. And maybe some BIOS data in the first page where excluding the IO fizz mem region, which is which is already much higher. Um, yeah, real mode IVT 
BIOS structures, that's free. Then the IO hole, okay, so what we need to do is, um, what well, I'm gonna do, K, MP, entry, entry, code, index, equals MP entry, P adder, page, shift. And I'm going to just add this here to this sort of messy list, MP. And I think that should do it. I think it's as simple as that. Um, Code should pass the updated check page free list test. So let's see this check page free list test. Um, yeah, here we go. The new test for lab four. Let's just give, oops, oops. Oh, let's give this a compile. And I actually kind of don't, um, I just want to go to where it call, where we call this, there's mem in it, and ah, uh, right, I think I added an argument only low, or no, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I did. Um, whatever, I'm just going to do make human and run it. I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. Uh, I don't know if this is working or breaking or, or what. Um, it seems to be actually quite broken. Um, quit. <laughs> so that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, let me figure out what's... My initial um, idea was to add a panic. Ah. So we have these two calls right here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna panic. It's actually quite concerning. <laughs> uh, panic three, three, three. What happens if I do this? It doesn't, okay, something is really wrong. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to make a temp commit and check out to this kind of fix merge thing. What happens here? It's probably not gonna work. Something bad happened and the kernel doesn't work. That is terrifying. Basically something happened in like this merge, like the kernel used to work and then hmm. then I merged into a bunch of code somehow, but th this was all totally working. So I don't really, yeah, I don't immediately know what will be causing this to break. Um, and hmm. so what to do, what to do? Um, I can just start to debug it. I think that's the only thing I can really try to do. And I'm just going to, from what it looked like, it was pretty bad actually, like, um, uh, 
um, it's not, it is not even like booting properly. So I didn't really plan on that doing this today, but it looks like we're just debugging why everything broke when I merged my code into lab four. I'm just going, yeah, I mean, what? Hmm. Everything should be visible. Hmm. Or should it? I'm just, I just want to see the diff between like my, everything was working at this. Um, hmm. Stash reapply. So everything was working here. A key move. Oh. Now my. I am just going to trash my um, build uh, tree. That's interesting. So actually, it should panic at 88, right? Panic 88. Um, Uh, oh, whoops. I'm trying to go to I386 in it. And everything should like work, right? That totally works. Just like it should. So that was the previous state. And then when I merged lab three. I don't, want, I don't want to create a new branch. I just want to uh, check out lab four. Um, um, <clears throat> so now I'm here, but I just want it to be, ah, okay. I just want it to be here. Um, Merge. And I'll make both these visible. So now I'm just here. Okay, I need to be actually here. Um, can I even debug this? What would I do to debug this? I just continued, which is not. It's like it's like rebooting at such an early point. So I, I think I'm not going to make so much progress by trying to do that. I think I need to actually just see what changed in the code. Um, which I kind of would have thought this would show. But what I'm not seeing is all these new files that got added. Um, but maybe that maybe looking at that merge commit is not going to do that. Um, Maybe I should have instead tried to merge lab four into lab three. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that is a, another strategy I can try. Um, so I want to go to lab three. Um, lab three debug. Get merge lab four. Right, make. This should not work. Yeah, should, this should not work in the same way, pretty much, I think. But now um, <clears throat> I can um, see what is 
going wrong, maybe in the diff a little bit more easily. Hmm, interesting. the upstream lab for? That's the upstream lab for, which got merged. Okay, having a tough time understanding this. Uh, lab four was after the merge. Commit. I think that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to uh, reset hard lab three. Okay. What I want to do is actually merge uh, upstream lab four, I think. <clears throat> um, we should trigger a lot of the same Um, yeah, it should trigger a lot of these same merge conflicts that I already kind of um, resolved last time. What I actually should probably maybe do is just try running upstream lab for make. Hmm. <clears throat> but now I'm losing all my changes that were necessary to make this build and everything. So I don't know if I should really be doing that. Um. Hmm. All right, well, we are debugging why this Repo NC lab four. I just wanted to see lab four, lab three debug. <laughs> Smart lab, lab two into lab three, and then lab three merged, merged into lab four. <laughs> what was the parent? Parent was here, upstream lab four, right? Um, <laughs> hmm. So from lab four's perspective, here's everything I'm changing about it. Uh, oh wow, my balloons somehow, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Um, okay. So I, but yeah, what I was, lab three was perfectly working. So I think this merge I was trying to do makes some amount of sense. I'm just going to try to resolve these conflicts all over again as quickly as possible. Um, so merge them here. If that works. Does that not work? Um, Twenty second break. Be right back. doesn't work, okay. Um, lab. Oh, maybe. Let 
Okay, so now I need the upstream lab four files. <clears throat> Net.c. And I pretty much just want the incoming change on all of these. Uh, well, I get maybe it's possible that. I um, like merge this wrong or something like that. But I don't think so. I think this is all legit. And I just want this stuff to be moved down here. And pretty much, right, print trap frame. And trap frame T, CS, unhandled trap and kernel, lab for this thing. Then my switch, to the declaration, okay. Uh, and I'm just going to take current change, so I don't want anything there. Okay, so this is kind of annoying, but I'm like, re... Was it somehow with this in the compiler flags? That's like all I can really think of. Um, so here it looks so confusing, but I think I just want this. And I'm pretty sure I just want the head. Oh, no format. No one used where G. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice. Continue. Okay, so now what I've done is like done the merge in like a bit of a opposite direction. I've merged is lab four commits, which I f in to, yeah, my lab three debug, which was totally working. And then lab, so lab four is like this. Uh, the parents are the D, D1 and also this 171, which is option lab four. So now if I look at this, um, yeah, now if I look at here, I can see everything that was basically changed from the perspective of like added by all this new lab four code. But and it's a lot of stuff. Kind of. Hmm. But the thing is, if I were to try to run this, or may, or maybe. Maybe I need to clear my object. Does that help at all? No, it didn't help at all. This thing is still not working. It seems to be like failing in, I don't know, pre bootloader or something like that. Is anything messing with the I don't care about any of this user stuff. Lab for make file. SMP CPUs. I wonder if it's this. I wonder if it's that SMP thing. Um, I'm going to try to SMP 
What happens if I comment this out? Does anything change? No, nothing changed. It is still Control B to figure. It's still rebooting all the time. Hmm. So that would be one possibility. That that didn't seem to be the source of it. Um. There's all this new stuff, but not frankly, none of it should matter because. We are not even getting to init. I just want to do like a while one. I don't know. I don't know if this will get optimized out. Uh, I'm just going to try to make it not get optimized out. I don't know. Um, So now the while one does seem to be there. But I think this is still not working. Which doesn't make sense because what could have changed? These are all the changes. affect this. Is it possible that, but, uh, I don't, like, we're not even getting here, I think. We're failing even earlier, so I guess I'll, I guess I'll just try to work my way backwards. Um, wait, entry that as current. I like don't see any changes to this, so I'm not really seeing why. It will be broken. Um, but maybe I'll try debugging it. Um, can I just do break entry? 945, that's correct. If I do continue, we don't even get there. <laughs> We're not even entering the kernel. What is possibly going on? To add. Okay, I guess I want to exit this. I guess I need to go one level earlier then. And debug. <laughs> like, what's before the kernel? The bootloader. What about here? What about, can I do boot main? Like, not really. But, uh, I don't really know how this works. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, boot dot out. Yes. The boot main. Okay. Does this work? Yes, this worked. 
Uh, okay, that is actually, at least that's a good sign. Something is now going wrong with the bootloader, but nothing changed about the bootloader. But at least, Now we're doing this call. Hmm. So now, where are we? move something into CR3. So we can't be touching CR3 in that many places. Mm. No, that's not gonna work. Um. Oh, but here we go. Here we go. I stepped instruction into the call and now we're at this one, two, three, four, four, seven thing, which is, which is here. So we are hitting the kernel. Why didn't that, why didn't that breakpoint work? There we go. That's, I think that is the problem. Huh. Kernel debugging cannot. Okay. So what this shows, I cannot access memory at address 10, 1, 1028. That means we are like the the virtual memory is messed up <laughs> as usual but what changed so what was the last instruction that worked move it says or and then move which fully flips everything on and then now everything is oh did i um Comment something out. I don't think so. This is our same, same old entry page there that was used to be working, and nothing changed. <clears throat> Nothing changed. But the but this is the bug. It's like the we're trying to access some virtual memory that's not mapped anymore. But and the question is why isn't it mapped? I think I know. It's because we're running the we're running the wrong entry.s. Is that possible somehow? Uh, wait, no, we're running and uh, wait a sec. MP entry.s. No, I don't know. I I kind of. It seemed like we didn't run enough code, or did we? Did we run this? Right, we lock. Is that this? Oh, 
I guess that is this thing. Hmm. But, okay, that, at least that's a good sign. And then it reboots the machine there. Um, it is very interesting. So that's a bit of progress. It's very interesting why I wasn't able to break in entry. Oh, because um, entry is a virtual, the symbol resolves to a virtual address. Mm. But when we hit it here, we are still running with like the low EIPs that are, that are not that. So I think I need to just, um, I think I just nip off the, the F0 at the start. Okay, and now we're here, good. Um, now I can disassemble a bunch of code and see that it looks like we are completely here, I mean, this, the, the number one, two, three, four doesn't appear anywhere else. So we're definitely executing in the um, entry point of the kernel. The question is, what is so wrong with what happened to our entry page? Durr. Relock, X one's current. Entry page dir. What is the history of this file? Did I? Um, yeah. Tree current entry page. Lab one, the file has not been touched for a long time. Like I didn't modify this. So it should. Totally still be working. but it appears to not be. So now I think the next thing to do would be kind of to inspect this address, um, which is going to be kind of painful to do. But it's, I mean, it's not going to be that bad. We just need to dump it. Or. This kind of explains it. There's no page tables here. This is super weird. Okay, 20 second break, be right back. we're making progress with the debugging. So something happened. Um, I 
there's just no page tables here. Um, hmm. But how is that possible? such a strange thing this is such a strange thing if i'm interpreting this right this thing entry page dir oh yeah oh, that's what i was trying to do i was trying to ag page dir entry page dir it's f zero one one thousand thing right one one thousand um Seems right. I th so now what I'm thinking is wrong is like something with the boot loader, potentially. That just like didn't load the kernel correctly. Did the kernel get too big or something like that with all this new code that we added to it? There's not, there's nothing really going on in the diff. That would suggest anything, like anything that would be changed about these like super low level boot details. I think something about the kernel got too big and is breaking like the loader or something like that. I kind of want to disable all this stuff just to see. What a strange bug. Okay. Um, yeah, I, can we just like not current make frag? Maybe this is just like a lot of data. Um, let's just try. Does anything change? No, nothing changes. Um, that's very annoying. <laughs> How do I entry? It's like the one. Um, still nothing there, so nothing changed. I'm convinced this data is in the kernel somewhere. It's just zeros for some reason. 
in memory. I am so confused. Oh, I am perplexed by how. Wow. Um. I think I'm doing. I think I'm looking at this correctly. I'm dumping the memory at this eleven thousand place. Which I think is okay. Zeros everywhere there. So, yeah, that's my current guess. The elf loader somehow kind of broken or something like that. Um, what I'm going to even, I'm going to go even farther, I think. I'm going to, I'm going to revert anything related to the build. Just these things. Because, because that's ultimately what controls if things are changed, I guess. Um, like, let me just try it again. I don't really expect this to change anything. Undefined reference to CPUs. Okay, so now it doesn't compile anymore because I'm not including. Hmm. So maybe it's not quite that easy. Untied reference to all these things. Yeah, of course, like the rest of the kernel is going to be depending on these things now. I guess I can't do that, okay. Hmm. But it definitely should be possible to exclude those. Can I do a make clean? Maybe, maybe there's some weird build thing that I... Uh, just need to simply clean out, but no, that's not it. Okay. It's not this. Not that either. Okay. Okay, so for some reason the page tables are zero. And so I think the only... I think, I think the only thing I can think of is that the... Uh, kernel is not being loaded correctly. Hmm. But, but nothing changed about it though. No code, no code changed with the loader. Nothing in the boot directory changed at all. This is all user space should not matter, I think. Sir? Ignore. Nothing that I care about, nothing that I care about. Hmm, okay, so option number one is I... Hmm, but... Hmm, I could try something else. I could try to just make my own and my var equals hex 31 or whatever. One, two, 41, 41, 41, 41, 41. And I'm curious, I should be able to compile this. Get this debugger going. Um, break. Here, I'm just gonna save this command for here, for later, okay. Um, print my var. Oops. 
My var is not there either. Are any variables there? What's... So... Wild. What is another global variable I could try to print that would have a value? Um... It's kind of unfortunate that these are all defines. These things are all going to be null. I think it's pretty much just all defines. I'm not sure I'll find anything. But yeah. Hmm. Okay, but do so do I have a symbol? Uh, hmm, <laughs> I do. They appear very similar. And if I dump my kernel, I should see some 41s in memory somewhere. So the, the data is definitely in the kernel. Um, just out of curiosity, the difference is this thing is hex 1000 bytes prior to my variable. So if I go and look for my A's, then I should be able to go to here and see the page table entry. which I believe is correct. If you, this is like little endian and stuff. Um, so this zero one is going to be the lowest byte of the page table, which is going to be this thing. And it's going to have the PTEP. It's going to, uh, yeah. I'm pretty confident that that's right. It's gonna have a pointer in there, I guess somewhere mm, which is going to do the page this page table thing um, that checks out to me okay so so it, this that was yeah pretty likely but I verified that the data really is in the kernel binary and the problem is somewhere with the loading. I think the problem is somewhere with the loading, yeah. The data is not exist existing where it should be. Which I can't explain because nothing here changed <laughs> between the last time my kernel was working and now. The only things that changed were the kernel got bigger. And so I think it is just something to do with that. Um, I think we need to debug some of yeah, this loader stuff now. Single table. Um, program headers, there's only, there's only two program headers. Um, Offset is the offset into the file. So, and I was looking at all these offsets. But 
cut are just like one, two thousand and one one thousand. So So it just starts at 1,000 and goes up. So uh, although something that's interesting is that like is that correct? Because if I if you do. I think I need to open a second pane. Um, uh, uh, yeah, give me one second. <laughs> um, I'll just maybe call this one, yeah. Okay, so, um, let's see. There's a segment that goes from offset 1000 but this is this seems a little bit small to me it which only goes up to like obviously one hex 8 This thing is much higher than hex eight. So is it possible it's just not getting included? That's crazy. But no, but then there's this then, but then there's like this whole region that starts immediately from hex eight and goes um, way past that. It's like hex eight. this right so hex 8 plus this hex 7 thing stretches all the way you see like hex 86 and my data is just what like at hex 12,000, there's like 86,000. So um, we should be able to even be able to see like a lot of data at the end, I guess. Uh, for example, if I search for 86,000, that, that, that should be, yeah, that's an address. So so our data should definitely be getting included here in this load header. I just wanna quickly check my elf loader in um, in load I code. Okay, 20 seconds, be right back. just to make sure I'm like understanding all these things right. But the way I am parsing the elf is I get the program headers. And yeah, I copy the data from starting from binary plus offset and from there, the file size into some place. 
conflict should still be totally valid. Physical address. But yeah, we load into kind of a high physical address, like the one megabyte mark, I think. Um, and weren't, what are these things? These are, yeah, these are, these are past that though. So that makes sense. like technically debug this um, starting from here mm -hmm. and verify that the read segment is working I can think of why the data is all zeros or when it should, when something should be happening there. It's one, 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 zero, zero, zero place. My data should definitely be there if it's being loaded correctly. I guess that's. I'm just still. I'm just still so perplexed as how something could have changed here. Really. It would seem like nothing relevant changed from going from my working kernel to um, the non working one. Just uh, going to git stash real quick and quickly. Back out to lab three. Clean. I'm just gonna redo the experiment one more time here when everything is working. Actually, I'm going to just run the kernel. It works, right? It works, totally, totally works. So let's just rerun the experiment one more time um, and observe. Okay, this address is the same as before. What happens if I do this? Yeah, the page table is right there. Um, I guess the myvar thing isn't there, but the page table is definitely there and it wasn't there before. So that's what it looks like when things are working. So that's, that was just a bit of a sanity test. So, so now we're going back to the broken world. And I'm gonna pop the stash. And 
Um, we're going to debug the bootloader. Can I? I don't think I can even print anything out here. I don't think there's any console support yet, so I think you cannot print anything out. So yeah. Make it be. Okay. And now um need to be like boot out yeah, out. Yes, yes. Uh the boot main. Okay. Good. So now we're here. <clears> hmm. <throat> And the theory, running theory, is that running theory is that this second program header is going to be the one that uh, that loads us. So we should be able to test that address. Um, af immediately after the read seg call and see a bunch of stuff in memory. And based on this bug, it seems like we're not going to see that. Like the disk read is failing or something like that, which I, I don't know. That might be the end of this whole thing. That might be the end of this whole thing if I can't get this to work. Uh, this whole, this whole, it's, it's been good while it lasted. Um, yeah. So, okay. Because, all, like, basically nothing happens after that point. We just jump somewhere. So it's not like there's opportunities for memory. I don't know, to be like read and then cleared out or something like that. Um, what is that a, oh, the Chinese keyword. How is that, how did I get? Oh man, hello? Okay. Okay. Um, so what I kind of want to do is I'm gonna debug here and I could look for my page tables, but I kind of just want to see if anything is being loaded into memory. Uh, clearly our code is being loaded into memory, um, which is in the first one. But I wonder if it's possible that somehow the second one is not working. Hmm. So what, um, what I kind of want to see is what is the actual first data in this thing? Um, okay, that's not exactly what I wanted. So I need to look for eight, three, Eight, oops. Eight C three zero, I guess. Wow, a bunch of strings. So that's where this. The strings are there. They end here, which begins the writable data, and it's like a shit ton of zeros. Hmm. Um, I wonder if I could poison the memory before I write to it. That would be very interesting to see. There's like a ton of zeros. So like, what is the first non-zero data? It's finally up here. You know, one thing that's making the kernel a lot bigger is all these kernel stacks. 
I still am thinking it's something with the size of the kernel that I got just too big. I'm trying to find, okay. The first data is the page table at 11,000. That's funny. There's like all like, okay. But what, what's something I can do, and this might be an actually an interesting test is, poison like a small amount of memory um, mem copy. Do I even have mem copy? I don't even know if I have mem copy here. Um, just gonna do this by hand, I think. Um, just gonna take PHPA. We're gonna cast it to an int. We're going to dereference that and assign hex um, 89, 89, 89, 89, there. Uh, oops. So does this work? Take the physical address. Treat it as a pointer, dereference that, and load some stuff in there. What is going on? PPA. Um, That is like a cheap version of poisoning, which we should be able to see if it works or not. Um, okay, let's try. Let's just, I'm gonna recompile it. I'm going to load. Run it there. This should work, right? Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, now we're on the second program header. Let's even take a look at this program header. Can I do this? Perfect. Does this match what we, what we, P offset, yeah, V A, yep. Looks right, looks totally correct. Um, that's good. And now, uh, we should do the right. The poison, and then the load. <laughs> poison, and then the load into PA from. How does this even work? Count offset, right? Offset from what? Yeah. And then we should see a bunch of data in memory at specific places that we uh, expect. All right. So now I've poisoned the memory. So now if I now if I look at um, the PA, although wait a second. 
That is so high. Why is that so high? That's a Colonel Virgil address. Uh, that might be the reason. I think that is actually the reason. It's loading. It's loading things way too high. That should not be that high. That should have no F there. It should have zero, zero. And I think if I were to check back out to lab three, that's what it would look like. It would have a zero here, I think. So time for a screenshot captured in 4K. Okay. Um, I think that like explains so much. I don't even need to run, even do this anymore. Um, I mean, I can just, I can just clearly see that this thing is way too high. That's a kernel virtual address and we are not operating there yet. So if I actually go through with that, I should, I, I should see data there. I should, uh, well, it's technically zeros now, but if I, um, if I go here, if I dump this, I think I might actually see my 41s super high in memory. Okay, no, that didn't work. Cannot access memory that high. It's all zeros. Okay, something doesn't really make sense then. I wasn't able to access memory that high in my debugger right now. So why would it be possible for this to write? You can use physical address directly. Um, okay, yeah, I don't really know, but I do know that this is so suspicious why it's physical address is so high. I really don't think that should be the case. Okay, time to quit this, stash all of this again, go back to lab three, make clean, make. Do this again, there should be no my var and take a look at the pro yeah whoa <laughs> that's something happened here oh my god uh, there was only one load header before and now there's two and it's messing up it's the linker script it must be the linker script sheesh Okay, I think something like, okay, 20 seconds and then we'll get back into it. I think we're getting there. Oh, 
I think it has got to be something like the linker script is what controls these things. So I don't really know what changed, like the linker script didn't change either, but it was, it's something about the size of the kernel got much bigger. With all this new code <laughs> and broke things. I think, I think I just need to be saying I don't know, I just need to be doing something here. I don't know wh what, but I just need I just need to make it I just need to make everything be based off of this physical adder. I don't know what happened. I mean, I can probably look. It's, there's some change here. That is, uh, I think it's like this kernel stacks thing, maybe. That's so much data. Um, I don't really know, but it's definitely something with the linker script that we need to do. We're missing something. I have all these sections. Link kernel starting from F1 megabyte, but loaded at one megabyte. Load the kernel in physical memory. That's the text, but, but don't we want all the data to be there too? Right now, it's like the old one. It has one segment with just like everything in it. Okay, it's kind of annoying that I need to flip back and forth um, between these two things. Maybe I should um, copy kernel. Okay, um, kernel lab three working. Um, but then for some reason we made a bunch of code changes that caused new segments to be added. Text row data, stab data BSS. And that's for some reason totally different. Um, here, lab three debug. could have possibly happened. For some reason now, we are now getting two segments. I don't even know we're getting stabs stuff because I'm not even using stabs. I kind of want to just delete this. Okay. Um. 
Uh, I should probably copy the kernel. Broken. So, the data segment. So just out of curiosity, if I just remove that stabs stuff, syntax error. Oh man. Okay, just goodbye. <laughs> uh, I don't want any of this. Unfind reference. Oh. all this stuff out, I guess so. Bug.c. Comment everything out. Okay. Debug info EIP. commenting things out left and right. Okay, so now that builds again. So now it's fixed. Huh. For some reason that is now back to using a an acceptable physical address, but the stabs thing was messing all of that up. Oh my gosh. Brutal. But at least I think I figured it out. So this should actually boot now. Um, I kind of don't know the state things are in, but we should see something. Bam, it uh, hit our assertion failed because because I'm not including my newer code changes, but yeah, fix the bug. Okay, oh my gosh. That was crazy. Um, what an incredible, insane bug. So let me just recap a little bit. So just to summarize what happened there, I, have, I was working on lab three for a very long time. My kernel was working and running and stuff. I'm then moving to lab four. It's a different branch with different code changes. They added a bunch of code changes for this multi-processing stuff. And um, I wanted to keep, like I need to keep all my existing progress, but I need to integrate all of their um, new stuff. And so I merged the branches together. And after I did that, the kernel does not boot at all anymore. <laughs> um, but at the same time, there were no changes to any of the early boot code at all. The kernel just doesn't boot anymore. Um, and I just start to debug it. I'm looking at the first few instructions of the kernel when it receives control and it's crashing after it enables uh, paging. It's crashing on executing the, the next instruction after it enables paging because that uh, address is not mapped or valid, so it's crashing. So then I look into it a bit further and um, it seems like the page tables, like when the kernel takes control, it immediately installs some basic page tables for enabling paging. But those page tables are empty. They are all zeros for some reason, which is not the case previously. Previously, they have at least two page directory entries that uh, create the minimal mapping. But in this case, they were all zeros. And so there was basically nothing mapped. Um, and that is so odd because I construct these page tables at uh, compile time. They're like statically just constructed minimal page tables. And 
um, just they're just empty in memory. They're just not there. Um, and um, I tried to add my own global variable to see if that I could see that in memory. I couldn't see it either. Um, I was using the debugger to kind of like dump memory and, and see where the, the page table should be. It's just all zeros. Um, and so um, the only possibility here really is that the kernel is being loaded wrong. Um, and either that data is being like truncated somehow or it's just not being loaded correctly. So then we need to go one level below and debug the bootloader, which loads the kernel from disk. And um, what I eventually noticed after debugging that is that the program, um, yeah, the program, there's like two program headers for the kernel that it's loading. And one of them, the second one that corresponds to, to this segment that contains all of this data with the page tables, it has a really incorrect um, physical address um, member of the program header. It's way too high. It's a kernel virtual address that starts with F0 and it's way in high memory, which is not what it should because the kernel should get loaded into uh, low memory, low physical memory by the bootloader. Um, and that was immediately that, that ex immediately explains everything because it seems like the the bootloader is 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 trying to load the data from disk but then it's writing it into the wrong place it's writing it way high in memory and, and not low in memory where it should be, be writing it to and when it does that then later on the kernel goes to try tries to access um that data that should be low in memory and it's not there um and the question is, so why? What happened with these load commands, like these load segments? And in the previous version of the working kernel, there was only one load segment. But for some reason, with these new changes incorporated with lab four, something changed with the build of the kernel binary such that there's two load segments now. And for some reason, the second one got is, be, is being um, emitted super high in memory or is being told to be written super high in memory. This is controlled by the linker script. And that's where I went next. And I um, don't really know linker scripts, but I was just playing around. And I was playing around with removing this uh, section called stabs, which is for like this legacy debug info uh, format that the class from 2018 that I'm following right now, it used to use that, but now that's no longer supported in the tool chain. And so um, I haven't been using it, but now it seemed to actively be causing a problem by causing the, the load segment to have the wrong physical address. So I deleted the, um, the stabs entries in the linker script and that fixed everything. So crazy one, um, spent an entire stream just debugging this, but at least uh, we figured it out and we'll be able to continue going forward from there. So yeah, crazy gnarly bug. Um, still don't know the true root cause of what happened with these changes because all these changes basically just did is, I think that they just added a lot more data to the kernel and, and its global data and stuff like that. And that, that caused some rearrangements with how it allocated, how like the linker allocated sections into segments and stuff like this which caused a new load segment to be created, which for some reason didn't pick up the original directive to to have the load segment be uh, written at a physical address in, in low memory. Um, but for now, whatever reason, that, that's working. Um, so wild stuff. So that's that's some crazy kernel debugging. Uh, I'm gonna call, call it here for the stream. Thanks all for watching. Um, Join my Discord, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.